Picture this, you are a settler looking for a new place to live. You see a spot on a map and for whatever reason you decide to go there. You pack up your family and you leave your entire life behind to set out for your new home. You get there and you realize that where the map said there was a town, there's actually nothing at all. The first social studies video that I ever made on this channel was called This Map Is Lying To You, and it focused on the way that different map projections distort the sizes of countries. Today I decided to make a sequel video that focuses on the phenomenon of paper towns, also known as phantom settlements. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and also make sure to comment down below what kind of video that you want to see next. Map making is an arduous process that requires great effort, so cartographers are understandably pretty protective over their work. Because cartographers are supposed to be drawing the same places, it became fairly difficult to know when someone's work was being plagiarized. To counteract this, cartographers started making maps with made-up towns that were supposed to serve as a sort of copyright. If you saw your paper town on another cartographer's work, you would then know that they plagiarized yours. I wish I had all those cool maps to pull down like Johnny Harris, but oh well. The Future Mapping Company's official website says, if you can imagine the work that goes into the creation of maps, mistakes and errors do happen, but traps are far more subtle. It may be the addition of a fictitious street or town, but more often it is a small change to the real topography. An extra wiggle in the road, showing a major road as a narrow way. Nothing so bad as to make the reader lose their way, but enough to be able to prove something has been copied. This is part of a larger phenomenon known as copyright traps. This can range from a fake word in the dictionary to a made up fact about a famous person in an article and everything in between. In the 1930s, two men named Otto Lindbergh and Ernest Alpins were hired to draw a map of New York State. To protect their work, they created the paper town of Aglo, New York, and dropped it in the middle of a random dirt intersection in the Catskills. Years later, a company named Rand McNally created their own map, which just so happened to feature Aglo. Aha! Lindbergh and Alpins had found definitive proof that McNally had plagiarized their work and they were ready to take legal action. But to their surprise, McNally fired back with a defense. In the time since Lindbergh and Alpins had created Aglo, New York from thin air in the middle of a random intersection in New York State, something had happened. All of a sudden, there it was, Aglo's general store. And there goes their argument. I mean, what could they even say at that point? There was a store with the name on it. Suddenly, their work of fiction had become real. Aglo, New York would then quickly rise to become the center of modern human society. The industrial and cultural capital of the world is what I say when I spread misinformation. Okay, that might've been a lie, but then again, so was Aglo. The Aglo General Store would soon fail because of a lack of customers. I mean, it was in a made up town after all. Despite appearing in some maps until the 1990s, Aglo sadly did not catch on. When I first started making this video, I was under the impression that enough settlers had moved to Aglo that over time it slowly became a town, but I was wrong. Of course, Aglo, New York and the term paper towns are commonly associated with the John Green novel of the same name and its film adaptation. Some people even make the trek to Aglo, which has turned into something of a niche tourist spot. One of these people was BuzzFeed writer Christy Lee Andoli, who wrote of the experience, when you pull over to observe the town sign for Aglo, which isn't easy because of the narrow roads, it's exactly what you'd expect a paper town to look like. Space stretching on each side like a blank sheet of paper. It's so subtle that if you blink, you could miss it, or mistake it for the same stretch of highway as the rest of your drive. It's located on a main road, but people drive through it every day without even realizing. Why would they? How could they? Which, if I'm being honest, makes me kind of sad when I read it. She does finish off her piece, however, waxing poetic about the natural beauty and mysterious nature of the paper town. I couldn't help but fall in love with the tiny space that is Aglo, not just because of its aesthetic beauty and the magic in its mystery, but also because it's evidence that we all have the power to make something real if we want it to. More humorous examples of paper towns were the towns of Batosu and Go Blue, which appeared on a 1978 official state highway map of Ohio. This one is a truly American story. These two are actually references to the University of Michigan football team of all things, with Batosu meaning beat OSU and Go Blue meaning Go Blue. I did some sleuthing and I came across a 2008 article on the subject from a web archive of Michigan.gov, so this is real journalism, folks. 
Peter Fletcher, the chairman of the Michigan State Highway Commission, explained that a fellow University of Michigan alumni teased him over the color of the Mackinac Bridge. Apparently, the bridge was painted green and white, which were the colors of Michigan State University. A very, very big offense, am I right? However, the colors were simply following state highway regulations, so it was out of Fletcher's hands. What was not out of his hands, however, were the maps. Thus, Batosu and Go Blue became paper towns. Apparently, some alumni got a kick out of it, but others complained that he was wasting their precious tax dollars. Fletcher says that then-Governor William Milliken even brought the issue up to him, citing complaints from the public. Fletcher then responded by mentioning that he was entitled to a $60,000 salary that he had never collected and that the ink for the maps only cost $6. Ah uh, yes, all this bureaucratic government waste. Milligan never brought it up to him again. And Fletcher, in a twist of irony, became a Michigan State University trustee. But believe it or not, paper towns are not just a thing of the past. I was able to find information on some modern versions of the practice, made even more interesting by the fact that we all have countless little maps in our pockets. Back in the distant past of 2008, you could find a village in the UK named Argleton on Google Maps. A quick Google search would give you weather reports, job postings, and even advertisements for home sales. You would have absolutely no reason to think that Argleton didn't exist unless you went there in person and found the empty field. Google has never admitted to making up Argleton, but it didn't exist and it was found on their platform, so... You tell me. To make matters even funnier, Argleton is an anagram of G not real, with the G supposedly standing for Google. I've been reading the book Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, and it's made me think a lot about the things that we take for granted in modern society. Things like medicine, technology, and even towns. The book talks a lot about how humanity's unique talent is the power of myth being able to tell stories and follow them without any need for tangible evidence. Stories aren't just folk tales, they're the value of currency or a company, the laws we follow, or even the name of where you live and the borders around it. Human beings used to be hunter-gatherers, on the move from place to place with very little possessions, and that was just our nature. At some point, the people that came before us had to stop, for whatever reason, pick a spot, and live their lives there. Eventually, these spots would become towns, cities, and entire societies because we said so. While there is a clear difference between a paper town like Aglo, New York, and a real town where people live, they're both plots of land whose only meaning is what we collectively give it. The world influences stories, and stories influence the world. You might make something up and then come back just to find that it became reality. Paper towns can be mysterious places for people to venture out to, or just fun facts for a guy to talk about in a YouTube video. But either way, I think they're pretty interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I've been working hard to post videos more consistently, so if you enjoy it, please, please, please do share the love. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Andre Dutra, and I'll see you next week.